What do you think about the giant ecosystem of frameworks uh, in JavaScript? I, it feels like, because, I mean, this is a side effect of how many people use JavaScript. Yes. A lot of uh, entrepreneurial spirit, like yep. create their own JavaScript uh, j uh, frameworks. Yep. And they're all actually awesome uh, in our own different ways. And uh, that, this is an interesting question about almost like philosophically about biological system and evolution, yes. all that yes. kind of stuff. Do you see that as good or should it like, should some of them die out quicker? I, I think that maybe they should. Now jQuery was a very clever uh, thing. John Resnick made this library that was sort of query and do and blended sort of CSS selector syntax with JavaScript sort of object graph or DOM yes. querying and made it very easy for people to do things almost like they were learning jQuery as its own language, yes. domain specific language. And uh, that I think reflected in part the difficulty of using the document object model, these APIs that were originally designed in the 90s for Java as well as JavaScript. They were very object oriented or even procedural. They were very kind of verbose. And it took like a constructor call and three different, you know, ho hokey pokey dances to do something. Whereas in jQuery, it's just one line. Yep. Right. So that fed back finally into the standards. It didn't, it didn't mean we standardized jQuery. It wasn't quite that concise, but you find now with the modern standards that we were working on in the HTML5 sort of um, effort, that things became simpler. The fetch API and the query selector API, document.query selector. A lot of things can be done now in raw JavaScript that you would make mm -hmm. more concise and terse in jQuery, but it's it's not bad, it's, it's pretty good. Whereas in the old DOM of 15 years ago, it was just too verbose. So maybe the frameworks were born kind of uh, because JavaScript lacks some of the features of j jQuery. And so like uh, now that JavaScript is, f is swallowing what jQuery was, then the frameworks will, only the ones that truly add value will stick around and the other ones will die out. And that highlights this also this division between the core language JavaScript, which can show up in other places like Node.js on the server side and the browser specific APIs or the document object model APIs, which are even managed by the W3C, the standards body, that was off in XML la la land when we were doing real JavaScript standards in ECMA. And you, you, you have this division of labor, division of responsibility and division of style and sort of uh, aesthetics and also speed. So the document object model really stagnated after um, Microsoft kind of deinvested in the web. And Microsoft did something in their haste in the spirit of Netscape, doing things quickly and getting on first, mm -hmm. called DHTML. And some of their innovations that were like an alternative document object model didn't really get standardized until HTML5, when we pragmatists at Opera at the time, uh, Ian Hickson, who went to Google, uh, Apple and, and Mozilla said, let's, let's, XML is not gonna replace HTML. HTML4 is too old. Let's standardize HTML5 based on all this good stuff, including that DHTML variant 